Good evening and welcome everyone. It's 7 p.m. and I call the March 23rd regular council meeting to order. The first order of business is the adoption of the agenda. Administration, do you have anything that you wish to add? Uh, thank you, Worship. Uh, no, there's nothing uh, to be added. Thank you. Council, is there anyone who wishes to add? Not seeing any, could I get a motion to accept the agenda? Uh, Councillor Olford? I'll move to accept the agenda as presented. Debate on the motion. All in favor? That is carried unanimously. Tonight we do not have a delegation. We have no public hearings. We have no business arising from the minutes. We will move on to six, which is business. The first one being the CAO report. CAO Thompson? Uh, thank you, Worship. Um, so my uh, report was uh, circulated to uh, Council um, previously on Friday. Um, yeah, just going through my report, uh, we continue to uh, uh, our fight with the uh, pandemic and um, Manager Morrison provided a comprehensive uh, update on the status of COVID um, at the March 9th uh, regular uh, meeting of Council. Uh, we've been undertaking interviews uh, for the peace officer position uh, with final recruitment processes to take place uh, uh, we, we, we think uh, this week. Uh, we're shortlisting of candidates for the EDO position and uh, plans are in place to complete this recruitment uh, process in the very near future as well. Uh, election training uh, continues with uh, an additional modules uh, in March. Uh, we've set up an internal elections committee to manage uh, the town's elections and to ensure we cover all aspects of the election. We've also met with the city of Red Deer and uh, we're looking at the opportunity and possibility of uh, collaboration with their election team. Um, and that would uh, be a benefit uh, to the municipality. So we're just working through those processes. And um, uh, to date, we have uh, accepted one candidate nomination uh, paper. Administration is looking forward to work with council uh, on, the, on the creation of a steering committee to raise awareness and encourage women and persons of minority groups to get involved in municipal politics. Uh, the land acquisition for the Greg Street uh, realignment continues to proceed well uh, with optimism that anticipated uh, project timelines uh, will be met. Uh, with corporate services, uh, the year-end audit is well underway with our corporate services department involved in and preparing and assisting in the many processes required involved in the audit process. The auditors were on site March 3rd, 4th, and 5th, where activities were supported with follow-up provided after they were off-site. Uh, the census project is well underway and I believe uh, we're at about 45 percent. Uh, over the past several weeks, uh, property listings were assembled, census pin letters were mailed out, and the numerators were hired and trained, and uh, those folks are out uh, undertaking uh, the census uh, right now. Uh, the executive assistant and our, um, our um, file manager are working together to update and organize the municipal uh, policy and bylaw registry, an action list uh, prioritizing the documents that need updating or where new policy and bylaws are required is being developed as well. Council can expect to be having these documents uh, come forward in the upcoming weeks and months ahead. We're currently recruiting for the positions. Oh, sorry, I covered that one off already. Uh, numerous uh, marketing projects in process, including regional tourism visitor guide and the spring and summer program guide. Uh, communications projects, including website structure map and preparation for the website workshop scheduled for and completion of the communications plan. A number of design, um, design work, uh, writing and social media related tasks are also um, underway. Uh, with infrastructure and property services, the, the enterprise asset management software tender was posted and closed on March 18th, uh, there was lots of interest uh, in that project uh, from various companies and we'll, we'll be reporting uh, at a later date uh, to council. Uh, the, the tandem truck that was one of the capital items RP was posted February 23rd uh, with a closing date as of uh, this week, uh, March 25th. Continued development on the envir environmental stewardship strategy is, continues. 
Also continued progress on the development of the contractor management policy and procedure. Uh, AEP advised uh, lead water testing requirements will not be extended to 2022. Uh, Public Works will be re required to conduct lead testing on 60 residential properties from May to September 2021. Uh, we had reported on this uh, requirement uh, previously to Council. Uh, we had reached out to AEP to see if there was any consideration on extending uh, the timeline uh, due to COVID restrictions. Uh, the Greg uh, Street and Womax realignment uh, is, is out for tender and um, uh, closes here uh, month end. And uh, CP Rail uh, grant uh, submit, was submitted, submitted uh, for the new CP Rail crossing. RV sanitary dump uh, uh, snow was removed. Uh, more signage and delineation is going in right away in anticipation of that facility opening up. Uh, we anticipate it will be open for May 1st, 2021, and uh, we'll be providing uh, that information uh, on our website and through our social media. Uh, participate in the second mediation uh, meeting with uh, the Northwest uh, uh, stakeholders um, on the Northwest Stormwater uh, Project. Uh, participate in the special regional waterline meeting uh, regarding rates and uh, northern extension. Uh, completed the motor grader tender process, including the award delivery expected uh, by the end of June. Uh, work has started on uh, EAS phase two, East Area Storm at Range Road 27-0. Uh, grubbing is completed uh, within the pond areas. Planning Development Department has completed the draft uh, LUB uh, and with it being brought forward in draft form for the Standing Committee uh, this past March 15th. Um, and so we've got a number of processes that were identified at that meeting, um, including circulation to appropriate stakeholders. Uh, interviews uh, are completed for the planning intern position. Ex uh, expected start date for that position is May 3rd in cooperation with the municipal intern internship uh, program through municipal affairs. Uh, the province recently announced that they will begin formal consultation on extended producer responsibility uh, for recyclables, so there will be more information and opportunity for stakeholder input uh, provided by the province. Uh, community services, uh, the Abbey Center is assisted with uh, several tours of the Eagle Builder Center construction and items related to construction and sponsorship. Uh, contacted arena groups to determine schedules uh, for both arenas, uh, created low intensity mass mandatory fitness programs as per restrictions provided by the province and classes started uh, March 8th. Developed additional training tools for lifeguards for the upcoming pool season, recalled one guest services representative and restarted bookings for the community center, uh, multiple showings for weddings um, in fall in 2021 and, in, and into 2022, so uh, that's good news. Helping to establish kids sport, uh, Lacombe County in, in Black Falls as a community liaison. Uh, with FCSS, we've had 20 youth participating in the virtual BYC drop-off drop off activities for uh, kids for Valentine's Day. Nominations were received for the volunteer recognition 2021, a total of 35, and I provided a listing of the number of nominees for each of the awards. Uh, 653 lunch boxes were provided in February. Uh, participation in the Canada Revenue Agency webinars Black Falls hosted interagency using Microsoft Teams with 21 participants. Uh, with parks and facilities, uh, we've closed all outdoor ice surfaces, uh, as council is quite likely aware as of March 2nd. Uh, parks uh, team is getting ready for the spring season. Uh, tree pruning uh, continues. Uh, Leung uh, Road tree removal project is underway. Uh, the light up Black Falls uh, lights uh, are slowly being put away as the ground thaws. Uh, continued uh, preventative maintenance, cleaning and disinfection duties in all of our facilities. And uh, we're pleased that the bike skill park is drying up. It's not quite ready for use yet, but uh, we anticipate that will be soon. Uh, with municipal and protective services, uh, municipal enforcement e-ticketing initiative is underway with pertinent regulations and fines associated, associated are being uploaded into the system. Training will take place in April and equipment installation soon after. On March 3rd, the policing committee was held. Uh, parking of heavy trucks on Parkwood was uh, discussed. A survey has been developed and has been circulated 
uh, to all the businesses uh, in that area and uh, with the assistance of Marcom. And, we'll, and uh, so we look forward to gathering those up and having uh, more information um, in this matter. Uh, six members of policing committee will be attending the Virtual Alberta Association of Police Governance Conference on April 23rd. Uh, March 10th, uh, Mayor Poole, CAO Thompson, and Manager Morrison participated along with Black Falls RCMP stakeholders in a meeting to develop the RCMP annual performance plan. All communities suggestions were very similar to the three the town of Black Falls put forward. The RCMP will now come up with objectives and initiatives to align with these priorities. Uh, with Black Falls Fire, we've had three new recruits uh, and they've started their NFPA uh, 1001 level one training course, uh, which will continue to the end of June. Uh, the RNCMP, as we mentioned, uh, been working on their annual performance plan. Uh, the detachment is now fully open to the public and staff levels are high and a new municipal position is awaiting further action from K Division to be staffed accordingly. Uh, with emergency management, uh, March 10th, Manager Morrison and Manager Bourne participated in a committee meeting uh, on the rewrite of the, the LRAMP uh, ESS plan. This is uh, coming along very well with partners being represented in the review. A draft is scheduled to go to the LRAMP agency for their review in April. Manager Morrison, Fire Chief Cote and Deputy Chief Elder are attending the Virtual Emergency Management Stakeholder Summit, uh, which took place today and is uh, also on tomorrow. Uh, Deputy Chief Elder has been working with Public Works, CSD, and the Core Point representative to ensure the program is working effectively for the staff in the field and performing uh, in the manner that we need. And a representative from the Alberta Construction Safety Association who's seeking to obtain her auditing certification has agreed to complete a document only audit of our health and safety program. This will only be used for her certification and will also assist the town in greatly determining how our program is looking in relation to applying for our core. And uh, that's my report to Mayor and Council. Thank you, CEO Thompson. I'll now open the floor to any questions. Councillor Stanley. Uh, through the chair, I had noted at a previous meeting that Councillor Appel had asked whether or not um, we would see information on the people who were putting their names forward on the elections site. And I looked and there isn't anything on there. So I'm just wondering when can residents expect to see those names starting to appear under the elections information for them? Uh, we expect to have that available next week. Thank you. Councillor Appel. Thank you. Uh, through the chair, Councillor Cindy answered one of my questions, so thank you very much. Um, my other one is in regards to the um, policing committee meeting and the survey that's going out to businesses in regards to the trucks um, parked along the street. Uh, will we also be taking public input into consideration or are we mainly focused on the businesses at this point? Uh, we were just focusing on the businesses at this point, uh, Councillor. Okay, and will we be focusing only on that block or the also the um, accompanying or the blocks on either side as well? Uh, we were uh, just focusing on um, uh, the block from A and W uh, going north up to up to the intersection at uh, at McDonald's. Okay. Um, Okay, I just I wonder if the business owners in the um, in the northern park there where the Boston Pizza is and the block south um, that street would also particularly have input as I'm sure they're driving by that area and uh, I know it's not directly in front of their business, but I really believe it appeals to that entire commercial section of the highway. So I wonder if it would be prudent to get their input as well. Uh, my apologies. I'm, I'm quite certain that uh, Boston Pizza and those other businesses in that uh, CRU uh, were included uh, in that survey. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Not seeing any. Could I get a motion to accept for information? Councillor Hoover? I'll motion that counts. Can you hear me? I just changed the headphones here. You're a little, you're a little low, but. Okay, uh, motion that we accept the inf uh, this for information. Thank you. Debate on that motion. All in favor? 
And that is carried unanimously. Moving along, we have a request for a decision on the ice allocation uh, policy. CEO Thompson, who will be speaking on that? Uh, uh, direct, or I mean, uh, Manager Krakowicz will be speaking on it, I believe. Thank you, that. Manager Krakowicz. Yes, as we had discussed at the uh, standing committee meeting, uh, we did bring this policy to Recreation Board on February 3rd and March 3rd. And we did talk to all the user groups uh, about having, uh, having the order of scheduling reviewed and, and knowing where they sit in that order of scheduling. And uh, everyone seemed okay with it. So uh, we just are looking for a request for decision here to move forward with this policy. Thank you. Uh, Council, are there any questions? Not seen any. Did anybody wish to move forward with a motion? Councilor Stende. I just want to say that I was really pleased with the amount of effort that went into organizing this and talking to all of the groups, especially our minor hockey league. Um, and knowing that our kids have more ice time makes me super, super impressed and very thrilled. So thank you for all the effort that went into it. That said, I move to accept the recommendation um, for the amended ice allocation policy. Is there any debate on that motion? All in favor? And that is carried unanimously. Thank you. Six point three request for decision: welcoming and inclusive community initiatives. CEO Thompson, who will be speaking on that? I will, Your Worship. Uh, the Alberta Municipalities Association uh, Welcoming and Inclusive uh, Communities Initiative was created in partnership with the Government of Alberta uh, to support policies and practices that create and maintain welcoming and inclusive communities in Alberta. A welcoming and inclusive community is one that is free from discrimination where all residents are able to participate fully in all aspects of the social, political, cultural and econ economic life of the community. The benefits of being a welcoming and inclusive community is, is that the initiatives contribute to all the dimensions of municipal sustainability, including social, culture, economic, environment and governance. AUMA's initiative offers uh, uh, include the online toolkits, guides and resources to support municipalities with strategic planning, performance measurement and engagement with diverse communities. Uh, webinars, workshops and conferences are also hosted to support additional learning for communities. At a federal level, Canadian Coalition of Inclusive Municipalities, uh, which is pioneered by UNESCO, is a network of inclusive communities throughout Canada. There are 80 member municipalities who enjoy many benefits, including access to a network of member municipalities from different areas of Canada and throughout the world and access to resources that help eliminate racism and other forms of discrimination. Uh, the town of Black Falls already hosts uh, in many inclusive events, uh, including International Women's Day, Violence Prevention Month, Pink Shirt Day, Orange Shirt Day, and Black Falls Culture Days, to name a few. Joining the Welcoming and Inclusive Community Initiative by AUMA will require a resolution from Council in order to join the Canadian Coalition of Inclusive Municipalities, Council must adopt a resolution to become a member, sign the declaration, inform the Canadian Commission for UNESCO, and announce the Town of Black Falls involvement to, lakes, to local stakeholders and residents. Therefore, administration's recommendation that Council move to join the AUMA's Welcome and Inclusive Communities Initiative and the Canadian Coalition of Inclusive Municipalities. And in the attachments, uh, there was information uh, pertaining uh, to, uh, to both these organizations. Thank you very much, CEO Thompson. Is there any, and I see Councillor Taylor. Councillor Taylor. Sorry, just had to mute. Um, I, I, you know, this takes me back a long time ago, um, in 2007, actually. Um, there's some inaccurate information with what's being presented. Um, I, I just want to share with you that um, the origin of this wasn't with the Alberta government. It was with CAPE. Um, I, I, 
it started with the collaborative labor force strategy, which had four key strategies and 12 boots on the ground. The welcoming um, <clears throat> and inclusive committee initiative was under the retention and attraction strategy. The actions that came from this were some of my favorites, really. We, we um, if, if you knew anything about where we were in 2007, the pace, um, we had plans that were for 10 years that we did in five. But the, the actions that came were um, across all size of communities. It, it was cross-sectional application within communities. It would, there was a series, but to be the province awarded CAPE at AUMA and then AM, AAMDC, um, uh, they received lots of awards for submitting this. I was on that committee that we, we did that. Um, I give credit to Donna Allard. Um, she was uh, our working partner for CAPE with the government. Uh, there was also another Donna that, um, uh, let me see her name, Donna Stewart Wood. She's uh, no longer with us, um, but she also uh, helped fund this through Alberta Labor. And we, CAPE, could no longer take it on. It went through AUMA, was passed through AUMA. And then the partnership took place uh, that you would be talking about here between AUMA. But before that, this, this received awards and went through the whole country because it went through CAPE, went through FCM, went internationally. And um, so this takes me back because there's, I, and I could provide, there's such a plenum of experience with this. I could tell you um, what many of the things that drove this and, and how this came to be. Um, and I'm glad to see this back up again because it was, um, was really uh, a unique experience on, on some of the things that we were dealing with back then that really pioneered. But you know, it wasn't just, just our, 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 our municipality then, uh, we were on the forefront of a lot of things that, that you see now. So it's, uh, um, I, I could give you lots of experience with that. I, there we had several um, members of our council that were on unions, which were dealing with um, people with language barriers and all kinds of things that would, that happened. So I'm, I'm, I haven't seen this for a long time, but it's good to see it back. Is there anyone else? Councillor Pell. Thank you. Um, after going through the information, I am prepared to move that council join the AUMA's Welcoming and Inclusive Committees Initiative, as well as the Canadian Coalition of Inclusive Municipalities. Thank you. And before we go on to uh, that, I just want to make a short statement. I'm happy that this item has come forward. Should it pass tonight, I would hope that it would come back to a future standing committee meeting to determine next steps. As you review the templates provided by AMA, you'll notice there are actually four levels of, of inclusion that any community can fall under. I feel that with working with the templates, this will give council a better understanding of these four levels and the work that is required at each level. I don't feel that that request needs to be included in the motion, but I think it's something important that we should uh, consider. And the motion has been tabled. Is there any debate on that motion? Not seeing any, all in favor? And that is carried unanimously. Next order of business, request for decision, National Volunteer Week. CEO Thompson, who will speak on this? Uh, your, your Worship, uh... Uh, Manager Bourne will speak on this ma this item. Thank you. We welcome Manager Bourne. Your Worship, members of Council, so good to be here this evening. And tonight we are looking at our National Volunteer Week. Uh, this year is April 18th to 24th. And the theme for 2021 is the value of one, the power of many. 
And so we're reflecting on the awe-inspiring acts of kindness of, by millions of individuals and the magic that happens when people work together towards a common purpose. This past year, we've seen people supporting family, friends, neighbors, and strangers, people standing up to systemic racism, and people sharing insights on how to create a more just and equitable society. We recognize the value of the caring and compassion that each one has shown another, and we recognize the power of people, organizations, and sectors working together. So this year, again, things are going to look a little bit different, but hopefully we can start things off uh, by proclaiming National Volunteer Week, the week of April 18th through 24th, as we have done in the past. So um, we look forward to sharing the value of one and the power of many with our community throughout that week and throughout the month of April. So uh, we are looking for an administrative recommendation to proclaim National Volunteer Week in the town of Black Falls this year. Thank you very much, Manager Bourne. Any questions or input from any of the council? Councilor Stende. I doubt that there is going to be any questions or concerns about this one. We pass it every year unanimously. So saying that, I prepare to move to proclaim April 18th to the 24th as National Volunteer Week in the town of Blackfalls, happily. Thank you for that. Any debate on the motion? All in favor? And that is carried unanimously. Thank you so much. Thank you, Manager Bourne. Next item is a uh, request for a decision on uh, Women in Politics Steering Committee. CEO Thompson, who will be speaking on that? I, I will, Your Worship. Thank you. At the February 21st or 23rd regular uh, meeting of the council, a request decision was provided to officially recognize International Women's Day. Information was also provided uh, within the report to council on initial planning to encourage, raise awareness and educate the public about opportunities for women in municipal politics. Uh, through this discussion uh, came the, the following resolution. Uh, motion 5821, uh, Deputy Mayor Stendi moved that council form a working committee, which will include current council women and administration to formulate and execute plans, encouraging women and persons in minority groups to become more involved and educated with municipal politics, including but not limited to a virtual open house with council women, residents and trustees. Administration has drafted the terms of reference uh, for the steering committee for review and consideration of council. If approved, administration will assist with the recruitment and organization of this uh, committee. Uh, attached is uh, the terms of reference uh, for uh, council's uh, review and comment. And uh, should council be, ex uh, be in acceptance of the terms of reference administration will recommend that these terms of reference uh, um, uh, be accepted as presented. Thank you. I'll open the floor for questions or comments. Councillor Powell. Thank you. Um, in previous meetings when this was brought forward it was um it was called so as early as the minutes um for the first meeting in march was called the women um women and minority groups in politics so my question is could we adjust the acronym to be wmp instead of wip um i realized that that would need everyone's consent but just something to put in uh put in your minds as well as uh where it speaks in regards to minutes i do believe it's a if it's a committee then we should have someone assigned um to take minutes i'm not saying that has to be a staff member um but that should certainly be in there as something that has to take place not a uh, want but a need thank you before we move on from that ceo thompson do you have a comment on that uh, suggestion? Uh, no, we can uh, definitely change the title of the steering committee and uh, uh, should council desire, uh, we can uh, definitely ensure that uh, minutes are taken at those meetings. Do you feel that if it's going to change the name, we need to have uh, that amended in the motion? Uh, I I would just ask the council to accept the terms of reference uh, um, 
as presented and amended. Uh, Thank you. And make sure that those uh, those changes are incorporated accordingly. Thank you, Councillor Hoover. Yeah, I feel like there's more discussion planned that uh, link to to this subject. I wonder, and I would be prepared to make a motion to table this discussion and or this this uh, item until after further discussion, just to save us circling around and circling back. Is that a motion? That is a motion. There's a motion on the floor to table. And do you mean table it or do you mean to postpone to a, a future specific date? I'm happy if we set this to a future date. And you have the date in mind? The next council, next regular council meeting, perhaps, if there's room. Thank you. Any comment on the tabling motion? All in favor? Opposed? That motion is defeated. Councillor Pell. Thank you. Just a comment on the change that um, I suggested. I'm interested in hearing everyone's opinion on that. I wasn't, it was just something I was thinking of while I was reading um, this over the weekend. So I wanted to bring it forward and hear other councillors' um, thoughts on that as well. Council has heard the rate. Councillor uh, Stende. Uh, since you are looking for input, I appreciate the changes. Is there any other further comments? Not seeing any. Does anybody wish to move forward with a motion? Councillor Stende. I will move to accept the terms uh, of reference as presented and amended. Thank you very much. Is there any debate on that motion? All in favor? And that is carried unanimously. Action correspondence. Council received a letter Pardon me, an email from myself regarding an email that I received from, sorry, I'm trying to get to it. I'm having difficulty. An email that I received regard, as a request from the Rural Red Deer Restorative Justice Committee Ad, Community Advisory Council. It's in front of you and the request is basically to appoint a member of council to this committee. It was addressed to myself, but I feel it's more, more acceptable for anyone on council to put their name forward. And if they're interested to be uh, in consideration for this appointment. So first of all, does anybody wish to comment on it? Not seeing any, anybody? Does anybody wish to volunteer to be assigned to this com uh, restorative committee? Not, Councillor Taylor. I would love to volunteer. I just don't know what my, I have a lot going on. Uh, April 8th. I have so much going on. Um, I would be willing to put my name forward, but I just don't know if I'd be able to meet the commitment. And I would be willing to take in the first session just so somebody would be in attendance. I, I have between now and May 22nd, a pile of stuff happening. And um, it's, if I could free up my time, I certainly would. I would love to be on it because I think it's a, it's a wonderful committee. I think being able to, uh, work in this way is a wonderful uh, opportunity. I just don't know if I could fully make that commitment. Thank you, Councillor Appel. Sorry, Councillor Stendy. 
Thank you. Um, do we know whether or not they would be willing to accept a um, backup? So for example, if Councillor Taylor wanted to put his name forward but was not always able to make those meetings, I would be more than happy to put my name forward to fill in for any meetings that he may miss and keep him in the loop with emails if they are okay with that. I have a feeling, I haven't confirmed that, but I have a feeling that that would be a wonderful suggestion. And I think that, that would be a good way for council to move forward. We would ask that uh, administration provide the names to the committee and with the stipulations that were made, uh, Councillor Councilor Taylor will be attempting to make them. And when they can't, then we will have representation from Councillor Stendi. And I know that they are very eager to have Black Falls participating, and I think they'll be thrilled with that suggestion. So I'd like to thank both of you for putting your names forward. Does anybody else wish to put their name forward? We don't want to cut you off. Not seeing any, then I would look for a motion to appoint Councillor Taylor as the primary representative to the committee and Councillor Stende as a appointed, uh, pardon me, as a designated, what, what, what should we call yourself, Councillor Stende? Honestly, I don't know the word for it either. I'm fumbling in my brain too. So we could just uh, call it as the alternate? secondary. Alternate. The alternate. Thank alternate. you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. That word just got away from me. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> so I would look for a motion from somebody on council. And I see Deputy Mayor. I'll move that motion. Administration, are, are you clear on the two appointees? Uh, yes, Your Worship. Debate on the motion. All those in favor? And that is carried unanimously. And once again, thanks to the two for stepping forward. The next one, 7.2, Big Sister Support Letter. Did anybody wish to speak on that? CEO Thompson? Uh, if I could ask. Uh, Sue Bourne, and she might be gone already, Your Worship. Uh, I think it's self-explanatory uh, in the information that was provided in the package. Thank you. And from what I saw, I believe that administration was in support of us uh, moving to support this. And I see Councillor Stendi's hand up. Um, if Manager Bourne isn't here, I can speak to this. Just having sat on our FCSS committee for so long, I know that we have been a huge support of Big Brothers Big Sisters. Oh, there she is, Sue. Sue, would you like to weigh in? Oh, for sure. Sorry, I was a little slow on the uptake there, Your Worship. <laughs> so this is a letter just requesting support from Big Brothers Big Sisters. And I know CAO Thompson and I did have a conversation as they have been such an amazing partner of ours with their mentoring programs, the opportunities they brought into our schools um, with their Game On uh, for youth and video games, the uh, oh, I can't think of the name of it. They have a girls empowerment group that they run. They have been an absolute integral part of the uh, social well-being of a lot of our youth. And uh, our FCSS is such huge fans of our big brothers, big sisters. And I know that the last year has been very challenging um, with the way that they operate with matching and volunteering oh, has been such a uh, challenge for them. So if there's any way that we can support them to continue doing the great work that they do, I think it is uh, a wonderful opportunity for us to do that. Thank you, Councillor Hoover. And I'll just weigh in a little bit. I uh, being involved with uh, this organization, uh, I, I know that their funding I think was cut in half this past year, which uh, has been a big adjustment. And you would not know it by their attitude um, that you know, a fifty percent reduction. Uh, they still uh, continue forward, and some of the programs will probably have to be held. Uh, put on hold for a while but uh any help even from my perspective being involved uh, i think would be fantastic great organization they're involved in a lot of different initiatives and in addition to that they are fundraisers that were held at the school during the winter are not being able to go ahead so i'm sure that they are they are struggling to maintain their programs 
And with that, are there any other comments that anybody wishes to make? Does anybody wish to put forward a motion? Councillor Olford. Yeah, I, I know this organization does great work in the community and I'll wholeheartedly uh, make a motion that council send a support letter for them. Thank you very much. Debate on that motion. All those in favor? And that is carried unanimously. So we will move through to item eight, which is the information. And we'll go through it one at a time and I will ask administration to bring the points up as we talk about them. But the first one will be a verbal report from Director Barnes. I thank you, Worship and Council. Uh, Eagle Builder Center right now is at 60% uh, completion. We have four more months of construction, uh, which is good news. Um, the concrete is being put in the second level concourse. That's going to take two weeks to do that. After they're done to the lobby area and then also, of course into the dressing room. Uh, the roof membrane is uh, complete and that was done by Goodman Roofing out of Red Deer. So good news there. They did a great job. Uh, as you see, the windows are going in, uh, just waiting for the colored glass uh, to go in as well. What it's going to be is clear uh, white frost and yellow in that front, uh, especially in the library area. The uh, door jams and uh, all the doors have arrived and they will be put in shortly as well. So uh, just a reminder to council that uh, you have a tour on the 21st of April and they told me that the concrete should be done so we don't have to have muddy boots as we walk through there. Lots of excitement, lots of tours. Uh, we probably toured about 300 people uh, throughout that uh, facility and everyone is just excited about uh, what's going on and they can't wait till, it, till it's done. So nice to see that. Any questions? We'll open, thank you. We will open uh, council for if there are any questions on this specific item. No, oh, sorry, Councillor Stende. Uh, not a question, just a comment. I have to say every single time we go by there, my children are getting more and more excited. They watch the first couple panels of glass go in and they scream with excitement about a new library. So the excitement in our community is definitely building. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Not seen any other hands and we'll move on to 8.2 municipal elected leader certificate and this is mainly for council information and i see councillor taylor's hand up just a question um <laughs> i have no idea how many courses i've taken this way i mean we've we seem to they all merge together. Um, do we have any records of what we've taken? Um, <laughs> I doubt that, right? I would think that that would be our responsibility to keep records of courses that we take. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Councillor Pell? Thank you. Um, we have been, at least over the past four years or three and a half years, encouraged to send any uh, courses that we take, any of our certifications to the EA so that they could have records and track that. So I don't know if you've been doing that, but if so, then there might be a record of it somewhere. Councillor Stende. I just wanted to note as well, if these, if you took any of these courses through Augustana, they would have record of that. So you should be able to call it school admissions and they would be able to give you a record of any and all courses that you've taken through them. Any other questions or comments? Moving along to the Parkland Library meeting minutes. PRL, PLRS board talk for February 25th.
FCSS board meeting minutes for February 11th, 2021. Lacombe County highlights for March 11th, 2021. City of Lacombe Council highlights for March 8th. Oh, sorry, Council Community Engagement Calendar 2021. And maybe I'll ask CEO Thompson just to talk on that a little bit. Uh, thank you, Worship. Um, so uh, similar uh, to past years, uh, we have been assembling uh, this calendar uh, of activities and events uh, so that uh, Council can uh, plan their time. It was also provided to Council uh, to identify um, uh, those events where there is um, uh, an opportunity for uh, public engagement. And so um, this, um, this uh, document is provided to council uh, based on the assumption that we're returning to normal uh, post COVID. Um, you know, of course, um, if that doesn't happen, um, very likely uh, in the very near future that we will have to postpone or cancel some of these events, but uh, we've been optimistic and provided this ahead of time so Council uh, can plan uh, over the course of uh, spring, summer, and fall. Thank you. Are there any questions from Council? Councillor Cindy. Um, so through the Chair to Administration, I'm just curious with the spring cleanup if there would be an opportunity for Council to take part like we did last year. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if administration maybe has some ideas on areas of town that need to be cleaned or ones that don't usually have people sign up for them, but I would be more than happy to help clean like I did last year. Uh, thank you, Councillor uh, Sandy. Um, we, uh, we have a, a management uh, team meeting uh, tomorrow after the post council meeting. So I've jotted that down uh, to have some discussion about the spring cleanup and opportunities for council at that meeting. Very much appreciated, thank you. You know, thinking back on that, Councillor Sandy, that was one of the last times that councillors were able to gather together and actually work together to complete something. So hopefully we can move back into it. Any other questions or comments? Okay, moving to the last item, which is the Municipal Planning Commission minutes for February 9th. 2021. I think I saw Councillor Taylor's hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to echo something that uh, Councillor Hoover had said earlier. Um, we are seeing a lot more activity in the home-based businesses, probably because dealing with COVID and, and the impact of the economy. Um, I mean, that's good because those that's incubators for future development. Um, but we've really been seeing a lot more of that. And I think that's kind of uh, a good strength for Black Bolts. I know uh, Airdrie at one time, uh, going back a few years, when we compared, they had like 200 home-based businesses. So, I mean, we're only probably about a third of what they were then. But I mean, it's uh, it's pretty. It's they consider that a, a great strength of growing their um, their economy and and businesses in the community. Thank you. Are there any other comments on either that point or anything else that was in the information? Not seeing any. Could I get a motion to accept for information, Deputy Mayor? I'll move to accept all the information items as information. Thank you very much. Debate on that motion. All in favor? And that is carried unanimously. We will now move to the round table. And tonight we will start with Deputy Mayor. Okay, well, you'll be able to see all of my round table notes on the agenda. So the one I would like to speak on would be the library board meeting. 
Um, the library is absolutely excited for the new library. They've purchased their shelving now for the library, which is exciting. And the friends of the library are starting to do some fundraising. So please watch the Facebook page for the for our library, the Black Falls Regional Library. And hopefully we will have some fundraising announcements soon for you. Thank you. Thank you. And the order that I'm going in this is the pretend order that we have as we were sitting at the council chambers. So I will move to Councillor Stende. Um, mine is all quite clear. Um, it's all there. I did attend a few events for International Women's Day, including the one that all the council was invited to by Ubuntu. And it was all very well put on and very, very informative. So to the um, organizations that managed to make all of that work on a virtual platform, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Councillor Taylor. Sorry, I got to keep on finding that mute button. Um, yeah, pretty pretty straightforward. Um, I, the one thing is, is there's going to be a fairly significant change on on the board for the Black Falls Chamber of Commerce. Um, the current president has moved up into his business. He he's only in operation now, and uh, uh, he just doesn't have the time to dedicate to it at this moment. And uh, the, the support that we had, um, she has moved um, away, uh, not moved, not leaving her community, moved uh, her career in a different direction. And so we're having to do, uh, need somebody for administration and fill some key roles at the chamber. So um, it'll be an interesting year with COVID and everything, but I, one thing about the chamber is there's always somebody that seems to fill in the spot might even be Ray. <laughs> and Thank you. Important. So we'll move on to uh, Councillor Ilford. Uh, yeah, a little bit uh, fuller month and uh, not uh, nothing too much out of the ordinary. Uh, I, I will notice though the agenda, my last name spelt wrong. But uh, that can get fixed easily. So I apologize for that. Uh, moving along, Councillor Hoover. Yeah, uh, I think the one thing that stood out for me was the uh, the Brownlee Emerging Trans um, sessions, which uh, leave it to a law firm to give an extremely well organized uh, online event. I think they did. This is probably one of the most well organized one that I've done uh, in the past year. Uh, some of the things that were interesting to me, uh, I did talk a little bit about legalities when it comes to um, municipalities, uh, municipal management of water courses and drainage. And for those of you watching or listening uh, that aren't aware, Black Falls uh, falls onto watershed so uh, it's really imperative that uh, and we do uh, consider our water management uh, quite seriously because of the fact that uh, that we can have a huge impact and so the legalities were being very uh, proactive and uh, open to talk to your neighbors because what we do and how we impact our water courses uh, has an impact uh, to people downstream and uh, we're in a year where uh, we'll probably be talking to some of our rural neighbors because uh, it's quite likely that we're going to be facing a bit of a drought this year. So uh, it might be more of a topical issue. Uh, they talked a lot about uh, incentives working with developers, uh, which is uh, quite important for us since we're continuing to develop and uh, looking at some of the lessons learned that we've had uh, with development agreements. So yeah, it was a fantastic uh, event. I look forward to all the Brownlee uh, sessions. Thank you. Councillor Pell. Thank you. I don't, um, I don't specifically have anything to add. 
my report is there and I'm happy to answer any specific questions. Thank you. Thank you. Not seeing any hands. I'll move to my report. It was a fairly busy month and I'll highlight the ones that I found of a special interest. I attended a virtual conference on the AUMA President's Summit on Alberta Policing Initiative. That was discussing the study that is going to be coming forth from the provincial government on, the, on putting in an Alberta, on the consideration of putting in an Alberta police force. I think that council will be receiving a lot more information about that as we move through the next, cu next couple of months. And they will be considering whether or not that will actually be put as a referendum. At this point, we don't know, but there will be considerable information and considerable discussion over the next couple of months. I attended the Brownlee Emerging, Emerging Trends and echo, uh, count, echo Councillor's sentiment on that. AMA put it on a presentation of Alberta's hydrogen roadmap. Diversification is a key interest within our, within our province and the hydrogen is an area that is exciting and they outline some of the initiatives that are moving forward. We did have our tour of the Eagle Center. I attended a webinar on the analysis of Government Alberta Budget 2021. There was a lot of discussion on there. Some of the highlights that came out of that is that while well, this year funding from the provincial government has, ha, is higher than last year, Next year and the year after, we are going to be receiving considerably less. And over the three years, you will find a net decrease of a considerable amount from MSI. The other interesting thing is that they are extending the MSI. They did have another name for it for the next two years, but they are extending the MSI. North Red Deer River Water Services Commission, we've had two meetings this month and I are having a third at the end of the month. We are under consideration that of uh, issue that I'll be bringing back to council at a future time. Attended the policing committee meeting, uh, RDR mug steering committee. I attended the AUMA International Women's Day presentation and the rest were fairly standard. I, did, I was reminded by CEO Thompson of the March 10th meeting with the RCMP Staff Sergeant Administration and other members of the Central Alberta Municipalities to provide feedback to the RCMP regarding the development of their annual service plan. It was noted at this meeting by one of the members of the RCMP, it is the first time that the goals for this plan were developed solely with the community input. So I think that we have to acknowledge the RCMP's efforts at this point to really work with the communities and to have their plans based on what the community needs are. It was really interesting to find out how close, when we, when we put forward our, our initiatives, how close they aligned with the other members, other community members that attended. So with that, I will look for a motion to accept the round table reports as information. Councillor Oford. I'll move to accept the round table reports as information. Debate on that? All in favor? And that is carried unanimously. We will move on to item 10, 10.1, regular council meeting of March 9th, 2021. So at this point, I will ask if there are any errors or omissions. Uh, Councillor Hoover, are you planning on moving the, the uh, for acceptance? Okay, before we do that, mm -hmm. I would like to make note that there was one, one um, um, omission that needs to be included in that. On 7621, under action correspondence council minutes, 
It says that Councillor Powell requested that the regular council minutes be updated. It was actually recorded as a, as a motion and it was carried by Councillor Appel and it was carried unanimously. So I would ask that that be changed within the minutes. Did you wish to move forward, uh, Councillor Hoover? Yeah, I'll, I'll motion that the uh, minutes are accepted as, as, as amended. Yeah, uh, assuming that administration heard you. Uh, yes, we'll make the changes. Thank you for that. Is there any debate on that motion? All in favor? And I believe we need to have the grid view up on the screen for everybody to see. Okay, I'll ask again, all those in favor? And that is carried unanimously. Moving on to the standing committee meetings of March 15th, errors or omissions? Not seeing any. Could I get a motion to accept? Councillor Appel? Uh, thank you, so moved. Debate on that motion? All in favor? And that is carried unanimously. At this point, we move to notices of motion and I will have, and there is a notice of motion that's come forward. Councillor Stanley, did you wish to read it out? Sorry, just switching between screens here. Yeah, um, I move that administration bring the Code of Conduct Bylaw 1226.18 before council for review and to, de to determine if council wishes to amend the bylaw. Thank you. That is accepted. Are there any comments? That there is no motion I needed to accept that notice of motion. So at this point, I will ask if there's anything for the good of the council from any member. Not seeing any. It is now time for council to move from its open agenda into council's closed agenda. For those watching, I'd like to thank you and I hope that you have a good evening. I would ask for a motion to take a break. Councillor Olford. I'll move a five minute recess. That motion was at 8.02 and debate on that motion. All in favor? That is carried unanimously and we will break for five minutes. Thank you very much and have a good evening. Jamie, I have to say eight minutes for an MPC meeting is the